PowerPoint, and you can read through the background in terms of the importance or the relevance of this assessment tool. I won't go through it in detail. What I'd like to do is demonstrate the three different tests and how they work with ASL uh, language acquisition in terms of the assessment. So you will uh, hear of the three different tests that I will be referring to. One is the ASL phonological awareness test. The second one is the ASL receptive skills test. And the third one being the ASL expressive skills test. You can see the slide on your screen. I'm hoping that you're following along here. And I will expand on each of those tests, but the important piece for me is to uh, share that all three of these tests are done on a computer and all of the tests are done one on one. Experienced researchers, teachers, teachers of the deaf, ASL specialists, or ASL experts. All three are done on an individual basis with one person at a time and take approximately 15 minutes per test. And again, the children access these testing materials through a computer. For the three tests, these were developed to fill in the gaps for teaching strategies uh, for bilingual programming. When we look at ASL language acquisition and literacy development, these three tests will provide the necessary information for teachers. We have standardized tests out there and have for years and years that are revised and updated on a regular basis. However, we've never had anything sufficient or equal for ASL language assessments. So this is where we're coming to the field. This is the first of its kind in the world, these three tests that we are bringing forward. They are standardized, norm-referenced, assessment tools, and I will explain each of them individually. When we look at a delay in first language acquisition, we know that that has a detrimental impact on learning, both in later uh, years and formative years, in addition to literacy development. So these assessment tools will measure, uh, report, and support teachers in their methodology when we're students. And it will also assist in developing appropriate programming to meet the needs of the children that they're working with, teachers are working with. We look at age appropriateness for ASL acquisition within our testing assessment tools. And so again, these tests will support teachers in the classroom. Participants that we've had in, in this testing design, the students were between the ages of four to 13. And often the questions that they were asked, uh, is if, or that are asked is, is, can we use these assessment tools after the age of 13? And the answer is yes. So we look at using these tools for immigrants uh, or students who are, uh, have, are delayed language users. Um, so yes, these tools can be used for children that are above the age of 13. We collected data from various schools, large programs with high numbers of students within Canada and the United States. So it is a North America assessment tool and we have established the norms based on each of the pieces. So I'll first focus on the phonological awareness test for ASL, which was the first one I spoke about. Before. The ASL PAT focuses on the child's ability to identify phonological features or similarities between sounds and what phonological relationships are there. So we look at these parameters being catching, movement, or location. The test is broken down into five parts. So initially, for the person who's administering the test, they would log, log in on the computer and uh, download from the database in a, in a live fashion. So you're putting the name, the age of the student, the school, uh, the student uh, has parents who are deaf, and so forth. 
then we'll work into a vocabulary check. And so initially what the administrator is doing is checking if the child wants, uh, knows these particular signs. And we're not testing the uh, signs that they know. If they don't know these vocabulary items for the vocabulary check, then you don't move forward with the test because this child would not be ready for the phonological awareness test. So we give them a few signs, and if they don't know those signs, then we can try to work through that in that moment. The third piece of the process then, because everything is available to the administrator on the computer, we then go to the educational video, which provides instructions on how to proceed with the test. And then you move through the actual test. And there are 24 items, a test block of 24 items, and I'll provide you with an example of what that will look like. So this is what you will see on the screen. And the very first bit that you note there, um, person signing, that is actually the, first, the full screen, sorry, that you'll see on your computer. So you see three examples right now on my PowerPoint slide. So the top one is one I'm looking at right now. So the person is there, the child watches the sign that they're seeing on the screen. And so this is, uh, the sign cue would be soon, okay, for this particular piece, this element. And then the child would need to identify which word has all three parameters that matches that particular cue sign. So if you look at the first diagram, uh, you'll see a picture of eggs. So that has the same hand shape as the sign for soon, but the movement is different. But it's also located in the same area. So we could say that there are two parameters that match. But then if you look at the next picture, that being of the spoon, and often children will sign that to themselves. So they will sign this to themselves as they're working through the picture. So spoon does have the same handshake, uh, different movement again, but then the same location. So it meets two out of the three parameters. And then the third picture is of the train, which actually meets all three parameters. It meets the handshake, being that of spoon, very very same handshake, the same movement of both hands, and the location is the same. So then the child would choose the, the train as being the best uh, match. And the kids can actually answer themselves on the computer. The next picture again is um, looking at two parameters. So we're looking at the handshake and movement together, or a location and movement together, or hand shape and location together. And so you would work through these as they're laid out. So you get the idea of what this looks like in the first portion of the phonological process. Okay. So the signer then looks at the cute sign for this next one being light, the sign for light. The first picture is a picture of cheese. It doesn't match any of the parameters of hand shape, movement or location. The second picture is a pumpkin. So it's got the same movement, different location, but the same hand shape. Okay. And then the third picture is, uh, uh, sorry, then we move down to the bottom one, the cute speech being money. And this is the sign for money. And that matches the same for the first picture being flower, the same hand shape. So I'm sure you get the idea of what this test looks like and how you would progress through it. <clears throat> Truly, it's amazing how a four-year-old, um, if they are born deaf, exposed to the language, uh, have deaf parents, their phonological awareness is amazing. And it is wonderful to watch uh, a child with those skills um, work through the test as such. I'll move to the second part of the test then, it's the ASL receptive test, and this has been developed for several years now, and many schools are using that test. So it has been released quite some time ago. I'll share a little bit of information about that specific test. The 
the same group of children in terms of ages were used to uh, work through this test uh, in the ages of 4 to 13. And in this test, we're looking for eight grammatical categories that children are able to identify. The sign that they can identify a picture that matches that sign for grammatical purposes. So they could be looking at phrases, sentences, and so forth. The test was based on a British Sign Language, an assessment test used in Britain um, that's based on the PPPT, uh, sure you're familiar with that, the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. Standardized test, so the design and the format is very similar to that specific assessment tool. And again, that test was uh, designed by people at the University of Winnipeg. The one that I just showed you, the phonological awareness, was designed at people, for, by people at the University of Alberta. I'm sorry, I said Winnipeg, I meant University of Manitoba. My apologies. So again, this, uh, the receptive skills test looks at eight grammatical categories. So they're looking at negation, number distribution, noun and verb distinction, spatial verbs, size and shape specifiers, handle and classifier, role shifting, and conditional. So looking at whether the child can identify those specific, specific features of the grammar, and I will try to provide you an example. So similarly to the PPPT assessment, you will often open with a diagram of something. Well, it's the cat, right? You're looking at the cat, and then you're looking at the text below and matching the print to the picture. So using that as a foundation or an idea, the child will look at this and see the signer on the screen. So the screen will be comprised of the signer. They will sign ball and then where it's placed. And then that particular screen fades out and the next screen that comes in is the one of the four pictures where the child has to then discern which picture matches what they just saw from the signer. So for this example, it would be the first picture of the ball on top of the table. It was not a doll, it was not a chair, it was not so forth and so on. The entire test package can be purchased for $230. If you check on the website, you will find all of the relative information there. It is being sold through Northern Science Research. And again, the link is there. And so you will receive in this package of 42 items the vocabulary check, the manual uh, that is on DVD. It is now also provided on USB. So once you buy the set, you can use it as often as you wish for one on one settings within the school. Administrators would typically then, um, again, provide this test, and those administrators would be ASL graders, ASL experts, teachers of the deaf, and so forth. The third test uh, is connected to the first one. The second one I just spoke about is the receptive test. Now, this one has not been yet released, it is the ASL Expressive Skills Test. This is measuring the child's grammar, the ability of their grammar level, their narrative skills, and content analysis. So we are now looking for norms for age-appropriate expressive narrative skills. Just taking my slide. What's the next slide that we're on? Okay. So you'll see the three pictures on the screen. Um, that set has three videos uh, for the expressive. And there's a lot of potential for this particular test for uh, to be used in any other language. Again, each video is only three minutes. 
Uh, there is no spoken language or sign language on these videos. They're fully either done in mind, gesture, or facial expressions. And so you, you would have the child watch one of the videos, and then they could sit with a person who's giving them the test or somebody else, and they would retell the story that they just watched and be videotaped while they were retelling. So if it's children um, that are using French sign language or Spanish sign language, this tool can be used for any language user. And then the assessor can watch and look to see whether or not the child is at an appropriate level of expression in their language use. When we're looking at the grammar assessment, we're looking for spatial verb connections. We're looking for um, aspect, manners, role shifting. All of that is being assessed. And can the child identify those features? So there are two people in, involved in the conversation and the dialogue back and forth. Uh, again, through role shifting, can the child discern um, all of those features? We have just concluded the pilot test uh, this past November, November 2017. So the ASL PAT and the ASL EST are now going through their norms. We are looking for, uh, hopefully, to release this kind of fall because we have all of that information uh, ready to go. So those are the three tests that are available now for standardized uh, assessment tools. And I'd like to now speak a little bit about other resources that have been developed by the team at the Alberta University of Alberta under the Western Center for Studies in, in Deaf Studies. And there are different resources that are available that I would like to share with you. So you'll see on your screen here, well, let me, let me speak first in English. We know that we have, we have families of words. And when we look at ASL, we also have families of handshapes. So we've decided to work with these 10 groups of handshapes in this particular game or activity. Uh, these are also available in poster size, whether that be small poster size, eight by 10, or really large poster size. Um, they are published and they are available. So children will identify various hand shapes. And again, it's um, the first phonological unit of American Sign Language is the hand shape. So this is how they will work through this and everything is kind of grouped by similar hand shapes. So whether we've got a full uh, O, a flat O, the hand shape of one. So I will show you a little bit more later, but this particular uh, diagram that you're seeing is ready. Um, for distribution if you would like it. <clears throat> so the poster aside, our team at the University of Alberta um, included, included young deaf children to design various apps that we are developing. These apps are interactive and they promote children to develop their phonological skills. Again, through these apps, which are all games they're fun, they're motivating, and we are very excited about the project itself. So we have a set of five right now uh, that can, you can work through English uh, and ASL in both languages. So it's all individually paced. All of the games are set up so that uh, a child can work through them at their own pace. Most of the games work with uh, matching handshakes on the apps. And essentially, we believe that ASL phonology is a facilitative gateway into early reading in English uh, for bilingual deaf learners. I'm looking at this on the screen with my glasses now. Uh, so we know that it's the foundation for literacy development in English. I'll show you some of the apps that we've developed the options, the gameplay options that are now ready. So you look at the handshake, you match it with a picture. Uh, there could be an English word 
in each text, then you would match it with the hand shape. So again, it works through both languages. I'm hoping that I can share a demonstration with you on my iPad right now. And so you'll see on your PowerPoint it says My Word Wall. And again, this is designed for deaf children to develop their own personal dictionary. We know that at school, kids will start to develop their own personal dictionary each time they learn a word. They start to note those in their own little dictionary. And it's typically done in alphabetical order. So A for apple, and once they've learned that, they'll put it in their little dictionary under A. We've developed something very similar. It's a different kind of word wall, and it's a picture dictionary based on hand shapes. But it works in the very same way. So do they know the sign for apple? Apple's not under A, apple is under X, the hand shape X, because of the parameter of the sign. So let's see if I can show you a little demo here on our side. I'm hoping you can see. So you would click on the word wall. And then the child screen will flip to this, very similar to what's on the PowerPoint right now. So I'm going to pick the hand shape one. And it's also color coded to, to match with the family of hand shapes that I showed you on the poster earlier. So I'll, I'll click the hand shape one. And then there are a list of words that are put into this particular page that show the diagram, the printed word that will match with this hand shape. So all of these words are done with this particular hand shape in Excel. And then later, the child has the option of adding in their own words. So they can go in. So I'll get back to where I was. At the very end, they can add a word. So if there's a new word that they learned that meets this particular hand shape, so bored, for example, I am bored, they can put that in there. So they can add the text. They can add a picture, maybe something that they've downloaded from the internet, or some type of diagram that fits for the word bored. So it's a very interactive tool, and the child can participate by incorporating the words that they learned on their daily basis. So that's one of the apps that we have. So from the same word wall, we developed this drag and drop app, and it's a game. back to this particular one. Okay, so it's right here, drag and drop. This is the hand shape in the middle. So it's W uh, on my screen. On yours, it's a different hand shape maybe for the PowerPoint. But so you can drag and drop the actual uh, words that are correct, that meet the hand shape, the parameters. So if I put wood in there, it doesn't work. It'll go back because it doesn't meet the parameters. So once the kids get all of the correct pictures and they drag them and drop them into the right hand shape, then it changes the hand shape and we can move on. <coughs> so we have five different games uh, and we've had a lot of help from young deaf children to work through these games for the speed. Is it user friendly? Is it fun? Is it engaging? And we've been manipulating and changing the apps as we've moved through these processes. So some kids felt that some things were too fast because they uh, moved too quickly through these screens. Um, so now we've added in or incorporated levels of difficulty. So again, younger children can start at the lowest level and then build themselves up. We know that older children like to just move through things really quickly. Um, again, it's got a scoring system, so the kids can work through these apps on their own. It's a very self-paced um, type of activity that they can engage themselves in.
This is another uh, app, it's called the Hungry Penguin. And as an example, there are three different handshakes located in the top in the penguin bellies. And so as the fish are going by, you're trying to find the uh, pictures that fit the handshake. And as you feed the penguins these pictures, they will change to different handshakes. And sometimes the fish start to move a little bit faster, the more that you start to engage with it. So uh, let's see what else fits with this handshake. Yeah, and then you just slide them on, drag them through to feed the penguins. Again, all five different things um, relate to the handshakes that the kids are learning, the parameters that the kids are learning. You can go back here to, let's see if I get to, this one's called the endless waddle. So again, the handshake is there. And you can bring the penguin up to specific signs and go through the various uh, handshakes and words. And so each little uh, piece of them, make this bigger, have um, words and signs, and you make sure that you bring your penguin right through. And again, they get scores for each of those that we get correct. So I hope this gives you an idea of what we've been doing. The apps are ready to be released hopefully this summer. Uh, it's just going through the licensing process. So we speak. <clears throat> this particular book, this activity book, is ready uh, to be released. It's got 24 pages um, of activities and it's really uh, beneficial for young children. Parents can use this with their children at home for story time or play time. It's very similar to the eye spine with my little eye, something that is blue. However, this has now been adopted for um, ASL users. So children will say, I spy with my little eye, something that is signed with the handshape X. And then they need to look for the pictures like apple, onion, electric. So those types of things. This is ready in the University of Alberta bookstore for sale. I hope that you've appreciated some of this information, it's new resources and materials that will support ASL development in deaf and hard of hearing children. And for further information, please feel free to contact Lynn McQuarrie at the University of Alberta. She will provide uh, much information to you and that information is also here in the PowerPoint for you as well. I do look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for your time today. So, Lam, thank you, Linda. Um, I'm going to. There has been one question, and you had already mentioned that um, that these have not been released. The apps haven't been released yet. Do you have a timeline, or you're just waiting for the the approval process or the... the yeah I think it would be hard for us to determine exact timelines because things are always changing so every time we say something you know maybe it's spring 2018 and then it doesn't happen it's in fall 2018 and it might not happen what I want people to know is that we're ready to release it it's the process that we're going through right now so the licensing the sign-offs and all of that too. But the activity book is ready. It is out there. And it's available. Is it available to you? You have, a, you have a bookstore only? Oh, sorry. No, not through the University of Alberta Bookstore. It's, we, we haven't decided where it will be available, but it will be out in the summertime, ready to go. I will let you know when it's ready to <coughs> how to access it, I guess. Can you give us an idea of what the cost of these apps and the activity book might be? Just a range. I know that it won't be exact. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know that I can go into details as such. We're trying to get the apps um, connected with Apple so people would kind of pay as they play um, or they would download a license of some sort. That really isn't a question that I can answer. But Lynn McQuarrie might be the best person to pose that question to.
I just have to look at the computer a little bit closer. I have vision issues as well. <laughs> Are there any resources you would suggest that pair with these that would support a child learning ASL? For example, chronolo chronological suggestion for teaching handshakes. Yes, there is one specific that's called Find My Handshake, and it has various levels where children should be able to identify their first handshakes in ASL, uh, the first basic handshakes. And all of those diagrams would be included in the activity, so children would identify A, B, C, 1, S, O, 5, those are the first seven handshakes um, that infants, um, deaf infants, would learn. So they go to that level first, and then, of course, they would move up to the next complexity level as they progress. So age uh, relevant depends on their acquisition and their exposure. Some kids are, you know, depending on their age, I guess, and when they acquire the ASL as their language. Just depends. Thank you. Another question? Quite a few questions here. Um, would you recommend that the ASL test the first part of your presentation be administered by a de deaf ASL user or could a, a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing um, with intermediate sign be able to administer it? Okay. Um, well, the second test I'm going to say was a really easy um, a teacher of the deaf could administer that test for the ASL phonological test, I would say teacher of the deaf as well would administer that test. All of the information is built within the computer, and so it's just a matter of recording the child's choices, whether it's a correct response or an incorrect response. So teacher of the deaf could certainly administer that test. However, for the third one, the expressive test, through the piloting experience, I've recognized that it's really important to have a native ASL user administer that type of test. And the reason why is when a child expresses the story, there may be things that's not related to the story per se, but will absolutely show higher levels of grammatical skills. And those types of skills may not be identified by a non-native signer. So I would ask for caution uh, for that particular test, who's um, maybe rating the receptor, the expressive test. Um, certainly, you could administer it and videotape it, but to give it to a different team to actually do the rating, because uh, there are native um, ASL users that are trained to rate these, these part, parts of the exam. So this is going back to the question about other resources for students who are learning sign and learning sign shapes. You mentioned something, but the listener missed your reference. It was the name of the resource for learning sign shapes that isn't in here. Sorry, I made you confused. <laughs> so I asked the question, uh, would you recommend, um, do you have any resources that would suggest pairing with these that would support a child learning ASL? And you gave an example of chronological learning? Yeah, okay, certainly. Uh, I mean, there's also, I think there's 30 years of research that's out there for um, the ASL acquisition. And uh, the research that we've been doing has been based on the linguistic information about ASL as a language. It's, I mean, there is stuff out there for sure. And again, so the, the smallest unit of phonological awareness for English is letter by letter, right? So when we look at ASL, uh, we research this as being hand shapes as being the smallest unit, not sign shapes, but hand shapes, and that being the smallest unit of ASL phonology. So that information is out there. And now when we have children or babies who are learning the language, they start with these basic hand shapes, hand shape one or the five for mom. But as we get further into the complexity of the handshapes, X and so forth are much more complex. So yes, we have the stuff that we're doing now that you're seeing come up now is parallel to what's already been out there based on the research. So 
we had you you talked about the the apps that the University of Alberta is preparing, and the individual was asking about teaching hand shapes in a chronological order and you had mentioned an app right away and they're looking for the name of that app no <laughs> or resource i'm sorry i don't remember it myself either okay i think i'm thinking about two different things the family of hand shapes that i showed you on the poster there's um, find find, find my hand, hand shapes was that it i'm sorry carla Find my handshakes. Right, so find my handshakes is based on the family of signs or handshakes, pardon me. Um, and then within themselves, they will identify the basic <coughs> handshakes that young children have. So that's already out there. Is that the one you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, and is it an app, a game, or a book? Well, all of the resources, they're all University of Alberta resources. The I Spy, the Handshapes, the Poster, all of that stuff is all Alberta, University of Alberta resources. Okay. So Find My Handshapes is part of the U of A product? Oh, yes. Okay. That's where we were confused. Okay, great. Um, I have a question personally about the, um, the ASL assessment tools, the three of them. Are they all, and I might have missed it because we were dealing with the technology, are they all available at this time or are some of them not available? No, only the second one is available. Okay. That one was uh, released several years ago, and schools are using that standardized test. The first one, the ASL PAT, and the third one, the ASL uh, Expressive Test, hoping to have released this fall. Thank you. So I'm just going to check and see if there's any more questions, and if not, then I'm going to. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Linda, so much. This was very interesting, and I think it appealed to a number of different people. And We'll have to have you back when everything is complete and um, ready for purchase. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this.